Hey, Science 20. So this is the uh, answer key for um, Unit B, Lesson uh, 1.7 to 1.9, we're going to take a look at today. So the first thing you have to do in this question was convert 70 kilometers an hour into meters per second for the calculation. So one of the things that you'll end up doing is that you have to end up uh, canceling, you have to go 70 kilometers per hour and then you have to convert one hour uh, is 3600 seconds and one meter, 1000 meters is equal to one kilometer, that cancels off the hours and then it also cancels off to meters so then you're left with units which are meters per second and once you realize that uh, that you get 3600 on the bottom of this and 1000 that cancels this into 3.6. So that's always the conversion of going from meters per uh, kilometers per hour, kilometers per hour to meters per second is dividing by 3.6. Then you use that uh, 19.4 meters per second in this formula, which is uh, time is equal to distance divided by volume, and that's a simpler rearrangement of the formula. Now, for some of you, that's going to look more like this using a triangle where you've got speed, distance, time and dis uh, velocity or speed is distance divi uh, divided by and then um, D is speed times uh, time. On number 37, you can see that one of the things that you had to do was, the first thing you had to do was convert the speed, which is 105 kilometers an hour, to uh, meters per second. And that was, once again, showing that you had to divide by that ratio of 3.6. Now, this was that different new formula that you had to use, and that was using for breaking distance. So when you see this, this is the breaking distance, not the reaction. So then you got, you'll notice that this, it's zero because you're coming to a complete stop. You have a... Uh, it stops in 3.8 seconds, and so then it's V1, which was 29.16, and plus V2, which is 0, divided by 2, which then equals 55.416 meters, and, and that's the distance that you've traveled. I'm just going to take a look at this question here, number 39. Okay, we're going to break it down into step 1, step 2, step 3. Okay, the first thing you got to realize is that speed is equal to, or velocity is distance divided by time. Then we can uh, we have to get rid of the uh, the t time, so we multiply by the inverse, which is time divided by one. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. As soon as that occurs, what we end up getting is uh, we get distance is equal to speed times time, like this. And then we rearrange the formula. So we get this, distance equals speed times time. Now when we move, move farther along in the calculation, you'll notice that we have to convert 90 kilometers an hour to meters per second. So, and, and then we can use that here in this calculation, which is 25. Now how do we get that? So we end up doing the 90 kilometers an hour uh, uh, kilometers per hour, we multiply by one hour, uh, is equal to 60 minutes. 60 minutes, is, uh, one minute is equal to 60 seconds, so this is the conversion that we have to do. Then the kilometers, um, oh wait, I forgot one more thing, we have to go uh, 1,000 meters is equal to one kilometer. And that means the kilometers cancel off, the hours cancel off, uh, the minutes cancel off, and you're left with, m or you're left with meters per second. And the number is 25. We use it and we move it across, and then you get your answer being. This works out to being. 
meters because once again the cancel the seconds cancel off here okay so one of the first things you have to recognize is that you're using this equation acceleration is VF minus VI divided by the change in time and you're trying to isolate for uh, time by itself which is what you're trying to get by itself so you have to multiply by its inverse to get this um, out of the denominator side so change in time one change in time now what that does is that that cancels that off so now to isolate change in time by itself you have to divide by you have to divide by change in uh, by acceleration so we just put this across then we divide by a on this side and divide by a on this side and then that will cancel off the a on this side and now we can rewrite the formula now we're going to add some numbers in here now the final speed is actually zero the initial speed is 25 meters per second which we, which we got after we did the conversion from uh, 90 kilometers an hour to meters per second now the excel deceleration or negative acceleration is minus 5.85 and then you get a number that is 4.27 seconds and that's how we where we get the braking time so what we have here is we have the uh, this formula which is distance is equal to a different one, v, uh, v1 which is initial VF final divided by 2 by the change in time so because V final is 0 it's really V1 divided by 2 times the change of time this speed we've already got before which is 25 meters per second which is a 90 kilometers an hour divided by 2 times 4 point it was actually 4.269 uh, or something like that and then it rounds to 4.27 always use a full number and then on our calculation, what we end up getting is uh, a number of 53.484. And your distance total so when you have the reaction distance at 1.5 seconds times the speed is 37.5 meters, uh, the two step. Uh, two steps to figure out the braking distance we have 53 you add them together you get 90.9 meters so let's take a look at this question here a skydiver steps out of the helicopter okay 3.5 seconds now we end up using this formula this formula again so part of the reason is uh, when they what's their initial speed is actually equal to zero so let's write this down So when you take a look at this question, V1 is 0, so this whole equation is cancelled off. So we're going to have to use a new page on this one. So the first thing we have to do is get the 2 off the denominator side. Oops. Then that cancels off the 2 here. So now you have 2 times delta D is equal to acceleration times the time squared. I need to get rid of A. So A on both sides. And then that means you can now cancel off the A on this side. And I'm going to rewrite. So this is where it gets a little confusing for some people. Now you have to remember we're still doing the exact same scenario we have to get rid of the the square root function here so we have to take the square root of this side and the square root of that side which then cancels off the square root here and then now we rewrite the formula alright so after we do that we end up getting time is equal to the square root of 2 times the change in distance uh, divided by acceleration and this is under and you have to square root that now this is where you can make some mistakes on this now one of the ways that you can make sure that you do this you do it in brackets 
So you put this calculation first, then you divide it by by the uh, 9.81 meters per second, and we get that from the acceleration due to gravity. And this is negative because it's it's moving down. Okay, and then from there, after you get the square root, you've got time is equal to 1.998 seconds, and then that becomes 2.00 seconds with the rounding.